morning, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. It's a privilege to be in the house of the Lord once again. And we thank God for bringing us safely here. We thank him for a good night's rest. We thank him for his Holy Spirit bringing us safely here. We thank him for everything that he has already done for us for the morning. Some people haven't made it. And we say thank you, God, from the bottom of our hearts. We can see each other's face. We cannot touch each other, but we can see each other's face. If, if we were blinded, we would have been able to hear or know that that person is a wrong, is a privilege, no matter what the circumstance, is a privilege to see another day. I'll just read Psalm 121. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. I will now call on the worship team to sing the intro. Good morning, everyone. You bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Hail King Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. All hail King Jesus. All hail Emmanuel. King of kings and Lord of lords. Bright morning star, and throughout eternity, I'm going to praise Him, and forevermore I will reign with Him. Forever 
more I will reign with him and throughout eternity and throughout eternity I'm going to praise him and forevermore I will raise with him one more throughout and throughout eternity I'm going to praise him and forevermore I will reign with him. Hallelujah. Great and mighty is our God. All hail the King of kings. He's Lord of lords. And we know that we are going to reign with him throughout eternity. Hallelujah. What great hope. We bless his name. Amen. Amen. Let's just get in the mood for prayer. Stay in that same mood throughout all eternity, Lord. We trust you, Father. Lord, we know, we know, we know that you have done so much for us we don't have enough tongues to say thank you God thank you for saving us Lord thank you for guiding protecting supplying Lord you are a counselor our king our mighty redeemer Father I come before you Lord just saying Father God Continue to be with us. Let your Holy Spirit just take control, my God. Cover Trinidad and Tobago. Cover the world, Lord. You have the world in your hand, Lord. And there's nothing, nothing too hard for you to do. You know every angle. You know north, south, east, and west, Lord. Father, I ask you to take control, my God. Lord, I lift up those frontline workers before you. Father, without them, we would be nothing. Father, you have them there for a purpose. And we thank you for the purpose that you have given each one of us while we are here on earth, Lord for your kingdom Lord Jesus not our own self grandise Jesus but for your kingdom so that we can give you all the honor all the praise all the glory Father at this time I live up Shimwell and his co-workers Lord Father God I just ask you to put protect them in a mighty way, my God and my Redeemer. Without them, Lord, you know we need them to do their job, Father, in a mighty way. Touch, Lord, the doctors, the nurses, Father God. Take control, take control, Lord. Jesus, I ask you to cover this church, my God. Each member, Lord, those who are here, those who are looking on, those who are praying with us every step of the way, my God, touching a mighty way. Take control of their homes and their families, Lord. Father, I just ask that you would be with Reverend Batista as he's on his way, Lord. Father, the words that you have put in his heart, Lord, let it be a blessing to us, Lord. Father God, this morning is prayer and healing, Father. And we know that you are the great physician. No matter what, we all need a healing. It is. In any circumstance, in any direction, Father. And you tell us to pray without ceasing, Lord. And Father, I 
pray, I pray, I pray, and I thank you, God. I thank you for answering prayers, my God and my Redeemer. Father, continue to be with us. Continue to guide us through all the service. Bless everything that has to be done, my God. Touch in a mighty way, my God. Touch the gate, touch the door, touch the ushers, touch the members, touch the worship team. Father, just let us be in union and let us know that you will always be with us. You will never leave us nor forsake us because we live under your promises, my God and my Redeemer. You promise us, and Lord, we stand on your promises. So continue to take control, my God. Continue to guide. Continue to keep us under your wings, my God. And my Redeemer, touch past and his family in a special way, Lord. Continue to be with us. Hallelujah. God, you take control, Jesus. Continue to take control, Father. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Cover us with your Holy Spirit. Let your holy angels just take charge over us, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. I pray these things in your name, in no other name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Yes, good morning, brothers and sisters. Nice to see you all here this morning. Um, Pastor or Pastor Reverend Warwick is at a visiting visiting at another church in South. But today we have a visiting pastor, someone who we know very well from Bonnier, Full Gospel Baptist Church, that is Reverend Ivan. But peace. He hasn't arrived as yet, but he will be the one who will be bringing the word this morning, sermon. And I know he normally brings a powerful sermon, but she delivers his own style. And we love him a lot, and we know that he's on his way. He will be here shortly. Um, we have any visitors this morning? Name? Oh. Odette Williams. Okay, this is the first time you've been here, you, you visiting us. Oh, you've been here already. Okay. Well, Odette, thank you for coming again. I know that when you came the first time, we left a good impression on you. The word came to your heart. And indeed, you are here for more, and you would indeed receive more, as Reverend Baptiste delivers that powerful sermon a little later. So just carry back our, our well wishes to your family and your friends, and invite them to come next time. Thank you. Um, we have coming up next month. Of course, on the 25th of this month, we will have our children's ministry, junior church. So when the young ones come with their parents, they would go straight to the hall. They would be administered to by your junior church teachers. That's on the 25th of this month, junior church. May, coming up, we have Mother's Day, of course. And uh, we're not sure what form that the celebration will take because we are in COVID-19 time and of course 
there are some restrictions in place. I don't know if they will be lifted by that time, but we hope so, as Trinidadians and Tobagonians behave themselves the way it's supposed to be, because this is a pandemic and a very dangerous one as that. Indeed, our condolences goes out to go out to the family of Mr. Khan. You know, um, he died, that minister, he died on Saturday morning at 7 yesterday. So we know that it takes lives. Well, we're not sure if that was COVID. But we have to be careful. And as I am that point, Please remember to do your due diligence as where your, your, your tests are concerned. You know, your, your eye tests, your blood pressure, keep that in check. Your sugar levels, continue to check that. You have doctor's appointments, clinic appointments, please keep them. And those of us who have already registered for the the COVID-19 vaccine, please keep those appointments. So either you get the vaccine or you get the COVID, choice is yours, right? So use your common sense and that sense that God has given you to make that choice. And on the 5th of June, we have the Caribbean Baptist Women Union virtual day of prayer. It's on the 5th of June and on the 20th of June coming up, Father's Day. Um, birthdays coming up for this week. On the 19th, we have Sybil Morn. She is a sick and shut in member, so you can give her a shout out on the phone. You have a number on the 22nd, Sister Jasmine Johnson. She's coming up on the 22nd. And on that same day also, we have Sister Lindley Sideno. Call these two sisters. Wish them all the best. 22nd of this month. These are all the announcements I have for this morning. May God continue to richly bless you all. Continue to keep you all in good health and strength. We come back here next week for a wonderful time again in the Lord. Hallelujah. No Jesus happen. is alive. He's got a power over you and I. He's got a power over death and the grave. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He's got a power over you and I. He's got a power over death and the grave. Jesus. He's alive, yes, Jesus is alive. He's got a power over you and I. He's got a power over death and the grave. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. He's got a power over you and I. He's got a power over death and the grave. Jesus, he is alive. Jesus is alive. He's got a power over you and I. He's got a power over death and the grave. Jesus, he is alive. Jesus is alive. He's got a power over you and I. He's got a power over death and the grave. Jesus, he is alive. What do you think about Jesus? Tell me. He's alright. What do you think about Jesus? He's dynamite. Tell me what you think about Jesus. He's alright. What do you think about Jesus? He's dynamite. Don't try to tell me my God is dead. He woke me up this morning. Don't, Don't try to tell me he's not alive. I spoke with him today. He opened up my blinded eyes and set my spirit free. All I want to know about is the man from Galilee. Sing it, what you yeah, think Jesus. about Jesus? He's alright. Yeah, what you think about Jesus? He's dynamite. What do you think about Jesus? He's alright. What do you think about Jesus? He's dynamite. Don't try to tell me my God is dead. He woke me up this morning. Don't try to tell me he's not alive. I spoke with him today. He opened up my blinded eyes. I set 
my spirit free. All I want to know about is the man from Galilee. Say, yeah, what you think about Jesus? He's all right. Yeah, what you think about Jesus? I know my. Yeah, what you think about Jesus? He's all right. Yeah, what you think about Jesus? I know my. Don't try to tell me my God is dead. He woke me up this morning. Don't try to tell me he's not alive. I spoke with him today. He opened up my blinded eyes and set my spirit free. All I want to know about is a man from Galilee. I say, what's, what's wrong with Jesus? He's all right. What's wrong with Jesus? He's all right. What's wrong with Jesus? He's all right. He's all right. What's wrong with Jesus? He's all right. What's wrong with Jesus? He's all right. What's wrong with Jesus? He's all right. He's all right. We say, what's wrong with Jesus? He's all right. What's wrong with Jesus? He's all right. What's wrong with Jesus? Luke chapter eight, verse eleven. And said, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Now the parable is this, the seed is what? The word of God. Let's read that again. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. All right, let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews 4 and verses 12. Hebrews 4, 12 said, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of our heart. For the word of God is living, or it's alive, it's powerful, it's quick, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. This is the word of God this morning. Father, I thank you for this time and this moment. You have given me the opportunity once again to stand before your people, O oh God. Stand with no strength, no power of my own. Stand trusting, believing, with great confidence, with great assurance this morning that the God that we serve is alive, he is alive and well, and nothing is impossible with him. Thank you. Thank you for the praises that we offered up to you. As a matter of fact, thank you for bringing us to this place of worship this morning. What a wonderful opportunity that, that our hands can raise and our tongue can lift to the roof of our mouth and our blood and body is still in regular motion. Yes, God, and Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we came to rejoice and to be glad. Thank you for this time together, God. As we sit at your feet at this moment, let the words of my mouth, let the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, God, because you know what each one of us want to hear we need to hear you know where we are at, oh God and what we need oh God I'm just your oracle I'm just your vessel in your hands this morning strengthen and empower to do thy will oh God in the mighty name of Jesus and the people of God say amen amen and amen glory be to God God is good all the time we serve a great God this morning before there was original sin there was original blessing let me say that again before 
there was original sin. There was original blessing. The first blessing set the tone and set the table this morning. It established the emotional baseline and spiritual trend, trend line of Adam's life. But it's not just Adam's earliest memory. No. It also revealed God's most ancient instinct for the human race. So blessing then is God's default setting. His first and foremost reflex is that God always wanted to bless you and to bless you and to bless me. As a matter of fact, I believe God wants to bless you beyond your ability that you can even ask or imagine this morning. So the blessing of God is more than a mystery to solve. The blessings of God is a decision made to make, a habit to form, and a mindset to establish this morning. Glory be to God. Pray God's strength this morning in Jesus' name. Now I realize that the only thing the enemy can attack is our body. He attacked this lump of clay with all kinds of diseases. But when you understand this morning, that God always wanted to bless you. You will know that, that God has your best interest at heart this morning. And I have an amen in the house. So it's important to know then what is the blessings of God. The blessings of God is really God himself. Is God with you and me or with us? Is God for us and is God in us? And I say that again. The blessings of God is God himself. The blessings of God is God himself. When the Bible says, seek ye, finish it for me. Seek ye first what the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things shall be what? Added unto you. You see, I think sometimes we, we, we do it wrong. We go to God with a list. And we say, God, this is what I need. I need this, I need this, I need this, Lord. Lord, bless me, Lord. Lord, bless my children, Lord. Lord, I need a house. Lord, I need a car. Lord, you know I'm in financial difficulties. And that might be true. But you have to remember. Let me ask, is God, is God the solution this morning? I say, is God the solution? Do we serve a God who has solutions? Well, he don't only have solution. He is the solution. So God doesn't want me, God doesn't want us to really get to know him out of our needs. God wants us to know him for just who he is. He is the solution God. So if I go to God, first of all, and I say, God, you know this morning, you are my way maker. You're my heavy load carrier. You're my burden bearer. You are a wheel within a wheel. You are Gideon fleece. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the alpha and the omega. You are the beginning and the end. 
You are my friend. You are my father. And you are my friend. Oh, this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I just want to know you for who you are. So I established now a relationship with him. Because he already know my needs. He already know my needs. So he is my solution to all my needs. So I want to know, I want to know the one who has all the solution. First and foremost, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all these things shall be added unto you. So he's asking you and I to know him and to know him first this morning. Are you with me in the house? I know I have limited time. So I'm trying to say plenty thing, plenty thing in, in my short space of time. Now, you know that parable coming out of Luke chapter 8. The parable of the sower. All right? Parable of the sower. Some fell among, some fell on the wayside. The sower went forth to sow seed. Some seed fell on the wayside. The fall of the air came and took it. Some fell on stony ground. It germinated a little while. And because it didn't have much soil, it died. Some fell among thorns. It germinated. It started growing. But the thorn that the cares of this uh, of life choked that seed and killed it. And some fell on good ground. And it came. It bare 30 fold. 60-fold, 100 But all I come to talk about is what verse 11 said. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word. The seed is the word. Let's say that. The seed is the word. So the, 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 the parable, the seed is in the parable represents the word. The word. So the, what the sower was sowing in a spiritual sense was the word. So, so in essence, nothing was wrong with the seed because the seed is the word. The seed is the word. In Hebrews 12, it talks about the word, which is the seed, yeah? The seed, which is the word. It talks about how the word then is alive. The word is alive. The word contains life. So the seed, the seed, which is the word, hallelujah, is alive. It has life this morning. This book is alive. These words in this book comes alive. When the word, when the seed, which is the word, is sown into our lives, that word, that seed comes alive. Hallelujah. Comes alive. We all know about seed. With this whole pandemic, whole last year, all of us had to plant something. We find something to plant though. Yeah? All of us plant something. So we know the principle of sowing and reaping. Sowing and reaping. The seed is the word. And the word has life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The seed is the word. And the word has life. Our physical senses are incapable of judging whether... A seed is alive or not. You cannot see, feel, hear, smell, or taste the life in a seed. There is only one way to prove 
a seed is alive, and that is to plant it. To plant it. The, the, the seed is the word. So to, to, to find out if the seed is alive this morning, I have to take this seed, which is the word, and plant it in my life. And I know we have testimonies this morning that this seed, this word, when you take it and you sow it into your life this morning, oh, and germination start taking place, something start to happen in the name of to Jesus this morning. Mm. Not only that the seed is alive, a seed does nothing until it's planted. Seed do not grow sitting in a sack in your cupboard. They must be planted in the proper place. When you look at the parable, nothing was wrong with the seed. It was always where the seed fell by the wayside, on stony ground, among thorns, and on good soil. But nothing was wrong with the seed. It was always the ground that represents our heart this morning, that where the seed Hell, hallelujah. And how you get a hold of that word. And how you take that word. And how you plant that word in your life. And you say that word is not for, uh, is not for, is not for Mason. That word is for me this morning. That word have I hid in my heart, oh God. That I would not sin. Against you. Mm. So the so the seed, the word, has to be planted. It has to be planted. It has to be planted. When we stand before you Sunday after Sunday, preaching this word, you know what we have to go through to get this word. Sometime all up Saturday night, still looking for a word to come and sow into your life. And while you're sitting there, you're hearing, but you're listening. Because you're thinking about what you want to do when you go home. Or what you want to do tomorrow. Or you're thinking about, and, and the devil have a way of showing you to Showing you even some, 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 some unstable things in church sometimes. And he, and he caused the word to fly over your head. But I'm saying to you this morning. If the seed is the word. And the word is alive. And I take this word. And I plant it in my life. Then there must be something taking place this morning. The best way to plant. No, let me, let me say this. Let me say this. If you desire the word of God to produce in your life, you must decide to plant the word in your heart and in your mind. The best way to plant the seed of God's word in your life is by speaking the word. Oh God, hallelujah. When this word said, faith comes by what? And hearing what? Now, you don't have to wait for Pastor Warwick to tell you the word. You could open up the book this morning. And you open up the book. And the book said, that The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid of? When the wicked, even my enemy, and came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumble and fall. 
though a host should encamp against me, my heart would not fear. And though war rise up against me, in this will I be. Now, when you, when you open up your Bible and you read something like that this morning, oh God, hallelujah, hallelujah. And then, oh God, as soon as you step out from your bed, the enemy start to kick up. I take that word that I've just read and I saw it in my life and I say, oh God, devil this morning, my God is able because he is my light and my salvation this morning. Is someone in the house hearing me? Whenever you need to be saved, whatever, whatever you need to be saved or delivered from, confession, whatever you say is essential this morning. I say whatever you say is essential this morning. You, you, you this morning, each one of us, you can speak the word into your own life this morning. Got up this morning. I ain't feeling 100. I ain't feeling 100. But I opened my word and I was doing my devotion and I come across uh, I think it's 2 Corinthians 10 and, and 2 or 5 to talk about, talk about uh, casting down imagination. And all things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Oh my God. Listen, I stand before you here this morning. Huh? And, I, and the reason why I said the only thing the enemy tried to attack most of all. When, when he can't get that. When he can't get at your children. And he can't get at you. He, he, he starts to attack your body. So I know how. I know how that goes. But I know that I have a servant God. Who said many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord deliver him out of them all. I serve a God this morning who said he was wounded for my transgression and bruise. For my iniquity and, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed this morning. I stand before you as a living witness that the healing power of God came upon my life. So a seed, a seed is alive. A seed does nothing until it's planted. Thirdly, a seed is much smaller than the plant it produces. A seed is much smaller than the plant it produces. So last year, I and my brother decided we're going and plant some hill rice. We chopped down the land and, and, we, and we, we, we fix up the land and we plant the rice and, 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 and we clean the rice and, 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 and probably we might plant about two or three pounds of rice, probably about just probably about an acre of rice and, and, and we get bags of rice. Or should I say rices? <laughs> A seed is much smaller than the plant it produces all listen some of you don't even need to hear this whole sermon all you need is one word all you need is a word and you take that word and you sow it into your heart and you say i'm running on this lord and you start thanking god for the word hallelujah and you start waiting for the produce to see what it got the, 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 the next point then is this a seed always produce after its kind are you a child of God this morning? Do you believe that your Jesus lived? Do you have Holy Spirit inside of you? A seed always produced after its time. Galatians 6 7 it talks about be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man so. That is what he will reap. Whatever you need, whatever you desire, find a word in the name of Jesus that relate to your need, that relate to your desires. Then plant those scriptures inside you in abundance this morning. Those seeds will grow 
and those seeds will grow up and they will produce a harvest of what you need or you desire. Can I ask, does this word work? I'm asking, does this word work? One more time, does this word work this morning? Has it worked for you? Give God a praise if it worked for you this morning. We don't have to try no underhand thing. We have to try no gimmick. We just take the seed, sow it in our lives, and, 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 and water that seed. Oh God, and water that seed. And give that seed some fertilizer. Hallelujah. And watch it grow this morning. No gimmick. I remind me of the man, the woman who went to this place to buy a chicken. And, 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 and the man take a chicken and he put it on the scale. And he told her the weight. And she said, nah, I want too small. Give me something bigger. The man went to his freezer and realized he didn't have no more chicken. So he took the same chicken. He man put it on the scale and rest his thumb on it. To, to, to give her more weight. And he told her the weight. And she said, ah, I will take the two. You get that? <laughs> we don't have to try no gimmick. We have to try nothing. We just have to take God at his word. And listen, if God's word can't work for you and I, then what the work? What else can we have? What else can we run to? What else can we look to? He is our solution. And this is his manual. And he said that this is a lie. And if I take it and I sow it in my life and I trust in him, hallelujah, one day I go have a harvest. The seed is powerful. As a seed begins to grow, it will push up the dirt and the rock, etc. Whatever the obstacles are, God's word planted in your heart will push them obstacles away. If you will only learn to trust in God. Now let me just say this as I close. Some, most times, most times, probably 99% of the time, when you plant a seed in the ground, if the seed begins it grows secretly. Secretly. Secretly, that seed is in, it, 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 it's in, it's in a dark place. I say it's in a dark place and, 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 and it's there and, 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 and it's waiting and and, and, and it's swelling. And, and, and so sometimes, I understand, sometimes, sometimes we go through some dark places. Sometimes it's our own doing cause us to go through some dark places. And then sometimes God allow some dark places. But the dark places is for you to grow. It's for you to germinate. It's for God, 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 God is, God is aligning your heart and your mind and your focus. God is, God is bringing you in alignment because, because he want to, he want to show you it's not just by might or by power, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. The only way to tell if the seed is growing is to dig it up. And you know if you dig it up, it will kill it. So sometimes, believers, sometimes in your little dark time, sometimes all you could do is be still and know that he is God. Because sometimes you can't even tell nobody. As a matter of fact, sometimes God doesn't want you to tell nobody. He just wants you to bear this. 
Because, hallelujah, hallelujah. Because you're, you're, you're going to be better. You're going to be more tough. You're going to be greater. You're going to produce more. But this, this, this dark season that I'm going through, God is working on me this morning. All I have to learn to do is what the word said. Wait upon him. Be of good courage. And wait upon the Lord. And he will strengthen your heart. How much more minutes I have? That clock working? How much more minutes I have? Five more. Good. A seed. A seed takes time to produce. No one expects a seed to produce a harvest the same day that seed is planted. No. No. Sometimes the word of God seems to spring up and bear fruit immediately. And I believe there are times God could do a quick work in your life. Anybody believe that? God can do a quick work sometimes. God can do. He is God. He can do a quick work at times. Yet if we knew the details, we would understand that the fruit of the word grew in that person's life over time. So there is a growth process that takes place in the life of the believer. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah, sometimes it's slow, but I grow in. Yeah, 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 yes. Somebody just say yes. Yeah, you might get a breakthrough just saying yes this morning. Yes, I'm growing. Yes. I'm coming up. Yes, I'm praying. Yes, I am praising God. Yes, I am reading my word. Yes, I'm still coming to church. Oh, God, it's going to take a little while, but oh, a day that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength this morning. Take some time to produce. Don't rush me. Taking the time. God's still working on, on each one of us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A seed is also persistent. A seed never gives up. But works day and night. Even when you are sleeping. The seed you have planted is working to grow. And express itself. In a fruitful harvest. Yeah. 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 So, 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 when, when my brother and I, when we, when we plant the rice, you know, you plant in the hill rice, you plant on a hillside. You don't really have to be on a hillside. Uh, so, so he's punching hole and I dropping the rice. So he punch a hole, I drop the rice. So I'm supposed to drop, a, I'm supposed to drop like five or six grain in a hole. Sometimes ten fall in a hole. You're trying to take that out. You just leave that and go along. And when, when you finish planting the rice, you sweep, you sweep, uh, you sweep over the rice so that the birds wouldn't come and take it out. And you leave it. You leave it. You leave it. You don't go back the next day and say, I wonder if you still have rice here, boy. And then you go back the next day and you start to think up and say, but I wonder if you have rice here. No. You leave it. And you go back in about two weeks' time. Woo! And all you're seeing is green, green. Green and you're saying yes, yes, looking good, looking good. And and hear what in here what I learned. In between we plant some corn and we plant some peas. Don't tell me this morning the peas and the corn did not affect the rice. And the rice did not affect the corn and the peas. Don't tell me this morning you can't work with everybody in the house of the Lord. We're not the same, but I could work with you. Because I might be rice, you might be peas, you might be body, you might be a stick of cassava. But all are we growing in the same place. So don't, please praise him. Don't ever say the church can run without me. Hello? Hello? Persistent. Never give up. Never give up. All of us who sit in here this morning, many of us, if not all of us, been through some kind of hell and high water. Are, we, are you with me this morning? 
Hey, 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 I, 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 I don't need, don't need I am worried now. I say all of us in the house have been through some kind of hell and high water. What wrong with all you this morning? <laughs> we have been. But I love the hymn that says, through many dangers, toil and snare, we have already come. But it's what? His grace that brought us this far. And it's his grace that is going to keep us going on. There is a word in you. There is a seed that God planted in you this morning. And nothing can kill that seed. Are you hearing me this morning? All the other, they, 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 they try to kill it. They say all kind of things about you. They, they, they throw cold water on you. They bad mouth them out on you. But they can't kill the seed that God has place in our lives this morning. This seed is a persistent seed. And it's not affected by other seeds. You know, like me, that's all right. We're growing right here. We're growing right here together in the name of Jesus. A seed will stop growing a seed will stop growing without nourishment. It just stop growing. We're not dead, but it will stop growing. So planting a seed is not enough to assure a harvest. Seed must be protected and taken care of until they have a snap. So, when we plant, we had to go back and clean the rice at some point. And because it was fresh land, we only had to clean it once. So when we went back the next time, the rice was this high. And, and, and when, when rice about to bear, they, they have a scent. They have a certain kind of scent that, that, that the plant sent off. And, you, yeah, and, it, and it will make you smile. Because you know it's about to, it's about to, it's about to, it's about to send out, about to send out rice. So, so, so the word that you hear this morning, you can allow as soon as you walk out the door for the devil to steal that word from you. You have to nourish that word. You have to feed that word. You have to water that word. You have to get some manure and some fertilizer. for the word? Are you hearing me this morning? So, so, so hearing the word is not enough. There's always about application. I want to take this word this morning. And I want to take this word and I want to run with this word for this week. I want the seed must be protected and taken care until they harvest. A seed which is dug up or not watered will not produce. So when you go home, don't wait till next Sunday to hear a word. But the word you heard this morning, water that word. Speak that word over your life. And anything you're speaking to, speak it over their life. Speak it to your children. Speak it in your marriage. Speak it to your plants and your dog and your cat and your goldfish. Just speak it. Speak it. And the more you speak, it will become part of you this morning. Are you hearing me this morning? I realize as soon as you cross 50, you start to get all kind of pain. Probably not all you don't get. Bless the Lord. So for me now, I have to learn to speak the word. Yes. Yes. The one morning is this hand. Next morning is this hand. One morning is my neck. Next morning is my leg. Then it's my head. And I'm saying, but what is this? All I have to hold on to is my word. Finally, more seed planted produce a greater harvest. The more you sow the word in your life, is the more a greater harvest you are going to receive. You can't plant one corn seed 
and expect a acre of corn. No, no, no. So I'm saying to you this morning, the more you plant seed in your life, the more you take this word, hallelujah, the more you take this word and you apply it to your life, the more you take this word and you apply because you see, God is not sure. Remember, remember when, when, when the prophet told the woman, go and borrow vessels. Borrow as much as you can. The oil, the oil only stops when the vessels run out. So, so, so the oil was not dependent on how much vessels she had. No. No, she could have walked through the whole village and, and, and just borrow vessels from everybody and have probably 5,000 gallon pan there to full. The oil would have still be enough. What you saying, Pastor? I'm saying this morning that you and I cannot run out God's supply this morning. The more you dig, is the more God will fill trenches. The more vessels you have, is the more God is able to fill vessels this morning. Are you hearing me, church? The more seed you sow, is the greater the harvest you are going to have. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. know what you're going through. All of us have needs, have desires. Somebody probably need deliverance this morning from something that you're going through. Does someone need a touch from God? Healing this morning? Someone need their mind to be renewed? Someone need their spirit to be quickened. All of those things our God can do. All of those things He can do. So the reason why I just ask you to stretch your hands in front of you. Say like the hymn writer, Lord, I stretch my hands to thee. For no other help we know this morning. You are truly our, the supplier of all our needs. You are acquainted with everything that we are facing or going through. So I speak a word this morning. I declare and I decree over our lives. Whatever we stand in need of, Heavenly Father, this morning. Meet us right where we are. Would you believe that this morning? Meet us right where we are, God. Right where we stand this morning. Supply. Deliver. Set free. Empower. Raise up. Close doors. Open doors. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are our source. You are our strength. You are our shield. And hiding place. So we take your word. And like the psalmist said. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my so as we face this week, Lord, let thy word be the, oh God, give us our entrance this morning, yeah? Let thy word light up our paths in the name of Jesus. Wherever we have to go, whether to work, whether to school, whether to do our, our chores, wherever Oh God, may thy word this morning, God, light up our path in the name of Jesus. You said your word is quick, powerful, sharper 
than any two-edged sword. That means your word could cut to anything where that we're facing, that we're going through, that your word could get at us in the name of Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. I declare it over our lives. I declare victory over our lives. I declare power over our lives. I declare healing over our lives. I declare deliverance over our lives this morning. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. I declare breakthrough right now over our lives as we take you at your word in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may it rest, may it remain, and may it abide with us all now and forevermore and the people of God say Amen Amen, Amen. Amen.